Welcome to Business Amplified with host Kevin A. Dunlap. This podcast is for small business owners aiming to amplify their enterprises. Explore strategies to play a bigger game by becoming an author, public speaker, podcast host, or expanding your brand in other ways. Elevate your business on Business Amplified. And hey, welcome back to everybody to Business Amplified. Today, I have a very special guest. We've actually had a few conversations uh, before, and I can't wait to sh- uh, share with you a little bit more about what she does. Her name is Shonda. Uh, Shonda, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Kevin. Well, it's been my pleasure. I, I know we've had a couple of other conversations, and I've really enjoyed those uh, uh, conversations. Um, and then now, now you're a guest on the show, so thank you for being here. Uh, Shonda, tell me a little bit about who who uh, who are you, what is it that you do, and why do you do it? Well, I am my my name is Shanda Coates, and I and I want to kick off by saying I get Shonda a lot. So I always I always remind people to think of a chandelier, and then that seems to really stick with people. So after I've given them that uh, connection, then it it sticks. And so that, that just goes to show you the power of connections, right? (laughs) And I, um, I typically would go by Mrs. Coates because I am an educator of 24 years. Wow. That's a long time. Yes. And so then it was interesting because I, I knew my my first name was a challenge for people, but then when I got married and then my last name became Coates, then that also became a challenge. <laughs> so I would get, uh, yeah, as a teacher, I would get Mrs. Cotts. Um, and, and so I'd have to also correct them and say, it's Miss, think of a, a coat that you would wear. Um, and then it, it would stick again with them. So they would catch on and say, okay, Mrs. Coates. So, uh, I, that's great that you got two visuals. That's good. You got a chandelier, uh, uh, wearing a coat. Okay. Got it. (laughs) There you go. Um, so yeah, I've just been really uh, passionate about teaching and coaching. Um, I, I taught 15 years, um, as a seventh, eighth grade English teacher. And then I coached for 14 years and I coached volleyball into basketball and then from basketball into uh, track season. So I felt like I was going, going, going all the time. And, um, it was just, it, it, it was something though, that I just, I truly enjoy doing. And, now I've I've just taken it to a different level and I'm now focusing on teaching or coaching. I could look at it either way, but teaching or coaching uh, people who are burnt out, um, they're just stressed, full of anxiety, and they are ready to exit out of what they're doing. And so I'm primarily focusing now on nurses and teachers, especially who are looking to exit out uh, of their profession. And and I want to help provide them those stepping stones to making that transition, um, going mm-hmm. from what they're currently doing to what they uh, could be doing uh, later on down the road. So I am excited about that. Well, I do know that because I'm a ex uh, college math uh, instructor myself. I did that for three years. And uh, even before that, even when I was in college, uh, undergrad and grad school, or undergrad, I worked as uh, in a math lab. And then in grad school, I worked as a teaching adjunct. So, you know, being in front of the room, uh, going over mathematical problems, and, and then eventually becoming my own teacher myself for several years. Uh, to me, I, I did enjoy that. I did impart knowledge. Now, I know you're dealing with, uh, like, say, I, I said 15 to 17 year olds. That's what you were dealing with. I like, primarily had 12 to 14 year olds. 12 to 14. Okay. Yeah, seventh and eighth grade. Okay. Um, so you're dealing. Okay, so you're dealing with a, a middle school, basically, for most people. Yes. Yeah, for I must admit that uh, for myself, I don't think I would have the patience to teach anything below college. 
it was just that's just me personally and and I, I remember uh, when I was a teacher, especially in my first one or two years, I don't know if you experienced this, I'm assuming most teachers do, is that when you have a student in your class and they, and they are not doing well, they're, you know, you're know you going to probably give them a D or an F, that I felt bad as a teacher for that I, that I was not able to teach them. And I took that personally. Is that very common in the teaching industry or at least in the first few years of being a teacher? I I always had the the mindset that, you know, I based on the work that they put in, the effort was the effort, the work that they put in was really a direct reflection of how they ended up for the end of the grading period. So I, I truly I learned that, that at a later I learned that later on. Like it was because just because that person made an F or made a D uh, you know, on the final exams in the midterms, well, did they do their homework? Well, not really, no. Like so, I it, logically I get what you're going uh, uh, going through, but my first one or two years, I know I took it personally if the student did, didn't do well because I would have other students that made A's. So I mean, it's it is something that uh, it, it was how I uh, focused. Um, now, the people that you're planning to work with or are working with uh, that are teachers or instructors, uh, uh, what kind of industries are they typically going uh, going into? Are they going to be becoming like a coach or some kind of other kind of professional like that? A lot of these people may not know exactly where they're wanting to head, um, being that they, for example, they were in like bed, maybe a bedside nurse or if they've you know, always just been in a classroom situation as a teacher, then a lot of times that seems to be what really holds them back from move, making that transition. And so mm -hmm. that's where I want, because they maybe don't know what their next plan is, their next strategy, then that's where I wanna be able to help support them and uh, give them that, that motivation to, to go into something else that would allow them that time back, really just to allow that time and that freedom that they didn't have uh, when they were in that specific industry. Okay, and I can understand that because I mean, I don't know when the last time I looked up this statistic, but it's, I, I think like 70, six, at least 60% of the people that have jobs out there don't like the jobs that they have. And and then when they are thinking about, hey, let me th think about becoming an entrepreneur, then they're thinking about, you know, what is it that, that I can do? And then uh, are they going to be passionate about it? Because one of the things I, that I uh, talk to people about, because, you know, being a business coach uh, as well, is like I would ask them, like, right now, what is your favorite time of the week? If you say Friday at 4.59 p.m. or 5 o'clock p.m. because it's time to go go home versus somebody says, hey, hey it's 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock on Monday morning. Like you know, if you're saying 9 o'clock in the morning, then you obviously you, that you're doing what you love. If you're saying 5 p.m. on a Friday, assuming the, the proverbial Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, then you're not doing what you love. And you yeah. gotta find out, find that that thing out there that you can be passionate about. And not only can you be passionate about, not only is that, but it's also there has to be something where so there is a demand where somebody would actually pay for it. Mm -hmm. I'm right there. I'm right there with you. I mean, I I can definitely say. Uh, and, and again, it goes back to mindset, though, because I think too for entrepreneurs, people, and and just in general, people who really enjoy what they do uh, for their profession, uh, there's that mindset where it's hard to say, okay, I've got to close up, I've got to stop, and I've got to understand that I need that rest, um, and so. It, that's been a challenge for me just because I, I am passionate about what I, I do and and mm -hmm. have making myself think, having that mindset again saying I need to close up, put it away and take this time for me, you know, when it comes to that Friday afternoon. And so something that I've started taking up is pickleball. And so Friday at five o'clock, that's when we have scheduled time. There's a group of us who have scheduled that time to go and play pickleball. 
And so that's mm -hmm. where it helps to, okay, I'm closing up what I, you know, I've been doing for the week uh, because you just love what you do and knowing, okay, I've got this activity that is allowing me to still be active because so many times we want to continue to be active. We don't want to close up shop. We want to keep going, right? So mm -hmm. that is where it's like, okay, I can still be active, but I can also have fun doing something else and also getting that interaction with other people. So well, well, that's one thing about being an entrepreneur is is taking some the, the some time off to uh, for yourself to give yourself either relaxation or activities that you enjoy doing because that's the one that's the one of the biggest reasons why, uh, in my opinion, that most people become entrepreneurs is for that that additional freedom after they've got their business up and thriving is you know what are they going to do with that that time and to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So I, I like the fact that you you pick something that is something that you enjoy this also it's also that's uh, that uh, encourages uh, exercise as well so that way you can keep your mind uh, focused and sharp yeah and another thing is uh that i also will incorporate is to see my massage therapist once a month so i had my i set up time on saturday this week this weekend to go and see my massage therapist um, to where again, you're getting that self-care in and you're also doing something again, you really enjoy. And it gives you, I mean, I do, I really look forward to going and seeing her, um, for my monthly, uh, visit. Um, uh, but I also know again, how important that self-care time is. And so it's different, but it, it's so, I mean, yeah, it's so rewarding. It really is. Well, and that is the one thing I heard from a, a massage therapist friend of mine that, that I actually used to get massages from. This is a few years ago when both of us still lived in Las Vegas. Neither one of us lived there anymore. And uh, and she did a, a massage therapy in her house. So you, you, you came to her. And one of the things that she uh, said to me made me really reflect. And for those that are out there that are listening that maybe never have had a massage before, is that she she said getting a massage is not a luxury item it is a requirement your body needs it and if you start looking at it from that perspective because the, you know that massage therapist is is, is moving uh, systems uh, your muscles around or working out your knots uh the, the, was it was it called the limbic fluid that that's Lymphatic. getting uh, excused or, or is being released from your body or at least redistributed through your body by not getting that massage, I mean, there's a good chance that you're going to tighten up, especially if you're doing a job that's very tenseful or it can cause you, you know, a lot of worry. I mean, you may enjoy it, but it may still be uh, uh, stressful. So that, you know, that once a week, once a month massage, uh, in my opinion, uh, opinion is critical. And you can either go to a particular one person, you can go to a company that, that you may get different people. Or one of the things that, that I used to do a lot in Vegas uh, was that I had somebody come to me, so I just never even had to leave the house. So she uh, she would just come uh, come to the house. We'd go into just out uh, in the office, but the office was big enough that you could put the massage table in there. And I would you know I would get the massage there or down in another room in the loft or a bedroom or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. So I, I would I would strongly suggest that what, what uh, Shanda is, is is saying is that um, uh, self care. And again, and again, it's your reward for doing the work that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like so many times when we are so passionate about whatever it is we're doing, it is so hard to, it is, it's so hard to stop and, mm. and, and, and say, okay, I need time for me. Um, what, and, and ask yourself too, like, what do you really enjoy doing? And I think this also helps to transition into those years of retiring when you're like, you've already embedded these things into your lifestyle already. And so you're like, okay, I mean, cause I can only imagine, I'm like, okay, well now I look forward to playing pickleball when I retire. I look forward to, con you know, continuing to get massages when I retire. And so all of these things that you're starting to do for yourself you're going to really be able to enjoy them even more when you are in that point of life where you're going into retirement. 
Yeah, and I would agree with that as well. And well, there is a saying out there, especially as you're just starting uh, building a, a new business, because you may be putting in a lot more than 40 hours a week. However, you know, if you've got that passion there and you start building it and you start building that residual income, that then then you can go and start doing uh, other things inside your life. And there's a saying out there for those of you who are just starting out. It is as a true entrepreneur is willing to work uh, twice the number of hours per week to make half the to make half the pay. And, and that's because you're doing something that you're passionate about. And you may be working seven days a week. However, you do need to uh, you need to have that downtime. You mm -hmm. you need to recharge. Uh, one of the ways that uh, and when I was writing a course on time management, it's like every 20 minutes or so or every 20 to 25 minutes, take five minutes off. You know, go outside, get a fresh a breath air or fresh air. Um, and that is because the the, the, the mind, is, if it's too focused for too long, you're actually going to start being counterproductive. Mm -hmm. So by taking that time off, you, you go outside, uh, take a walk around the, the parking lot or your your house or, or, or whatever, uh, or go smell the roses. But but then then you come back, you're going to you most likely going to be re-energized. And that five minutes that you took off is going to make you a lot more productive than if you actually worked that five minutes. Mm -hmm. And yep. for those of you that are uh, uh, listening to uh, the show because you're not watching the video, uh, uh, Shanda is shaking your head vigorously in the yes direction. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it, and I think too of what the conversation I just had with my sister, my my sister recently, and how she said she's got a desk job, and so she has made it a um, a hat. She's made a habit of getting up and walking around. I think it was at every hour. I think she's in, she's incorporated walking around for five to 10 minutes. So just with her saying that, that, yeah, that definitely, I mean, cause you can all, I, I can't imagine, but you, you, for those of you out there who can imagine a desk job and how much sitting um, really can take a toll on uh, your body as well as I'm sure your mind, but uh, just to be able to, like, you know, you mentioned, take those breaks because yeah, you can be so much more productive. Well, I mean, so I've worked both. I, as I mentioned earlier, I was a, a, a college math instructor. I also, at one time, I was a computer programmer. So that means sitting at the desk. Uh, right now, with, with with what I do, I shoot a lot of videos on online from my from using Zoom or something along those lines. I do a lot of coding and, and what have you. So I'm sitting at my desk a lot. However, I make it a habit that I drink a lot of water. So every every so often, I need to go get more ice to put in my water bottle. Uh, or to my into my glass that you know and i'm you know i've got a pedometer on and, and i want to make sure that i am getting up every every so so long even if i've got a, a glass that's uh just as is half full of water then all the ice is melted like well let me go get some more ice so at least i'm getting up and i'm moving because if you don't move around and you're not getting a massage on a regular basis your body will tighten up so in my opinion um, you know, if you really want to stay uh, active, obviously you play, play pickleball, play, play tennis, you know, whatever it is, but also make sure that you that you get that massage. And the second thing is maybe even and this is even for you men out there, maybe even start doing yoga because the yoga is going to help with your with your flexibility and your stretching. And I, I, I recall back when I lived in Vegas, uh, these like big uh burly uh, like football player type guys came into the yoga class and with their girlfriends and it was a heated yoga class as well so it was a, it was a 90 minute a, a Bikram yoga class mm -hmm. um, so so and, and the guys were actually exhausted by the end of the class the, the women were outdoing the men even though they were like these big 200 plus pound uh, burly guys and yeah. uh, so I would I would highly suggest that for you you guys out there as well is to maybe take a yoga class once or twice a week because that will increase your uh, the flow of your blood through your body as well as increase your flexibility. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I know for myself, um, at one time, I remember I'm a six foot tall person and I, uh, and I would deliberately st uh, stand and put my yoga mat next to a girl that was probably like five or five two. I did deliberately, I did that. And whenever she went down into her warrior one or warrior two, I go, and I said, I've got to get my head below her head. 
So I, I'm, I'm guiding. Uh, so I'm, uh, so I challenged myself that even the the, the, the the tiny people that I was like, I'm, I'm going to be this flexible today. <laughs> Uh, so that that is definitely something to uh, reinvigorate your body. Uh, would you agree? I would definitely agree. And I know my massage therapist talks speaks highly of yoga, and uh, and and she also talks a lot about magnesium as well. So those those two actually are are pretty hot topics with with my massage therapist. Um, so definitely yes. Well, if you're going to go down to uh, nutrients, if you if, if you do have a desk job or if you have an indoor job, then you may also go on to look at the, some uh, vitamin vitamin C and vitamin E as well. Because mm -hmm. if you're not getting direct sunlight, and, and I'm not talking about you're getting your sunlight through a window. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about actually direct sunlight. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to use, uh, you know, look into the, those kinds of uh, things just so that you can uh, keep yourself he healthy. Yeah, because I mean, I read online, or I think I saw it on TikTok, where um, the average American person to, is starting to develop uh, arthritis in their fifties instead of in their seventies, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a lot of that is because of inactivity, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I would I would imagine that yeah, the massage there. I mean, and and looking again down on your our phones. You know, that that's another factor in, in regards to stress on your neck. And um, I just, yeah, I, I, that's where I definitely think there's so many benefits, like you said, to yoga and to getting your massage uh, therapy treatment. Um, so, yeah, definitely two two win wins right there. Uh, and I'm going to share something with, I know you don't know this, uh, Shanda, but uh, uh, one of the things that I've done myself personally is that I, I used to have my my uh, desk, it's an L-shaped desk in, in, inside the corner of, of, of my office. So I, was, I had a wall in front of me, had a wall beside me, and to my left, you know, it was outside of peripheral vision, but I had a window. And so therefore, every once in a while, I would look out the window, like, okay, that's all nice and pretty and such. And what I ended up doing about two months ago is I rotated my desk where now if I'm looking at my second monitor, around the monitor is, is, the, is the window. So I'm literally uh, in my peripheral vision, I'm seeing uh, nature uh, and I've got trees and, and grass in the, in the background. So I'm seeing nature on a regular, I mean, uh, daily. And that, and, that, and that has changed uh, my attitude on a lot of things by just rotating my desk to get more sunlight coming in. Now, for me at the time of this recording, uh, around three o'clock, that's when the sun, because uh, it faces the east, or excuse me, it faces the west. So around three o'clock, I may have to close the blinds because the, the light's coming in because the, the sun is starting to set. So, uh, so I, I, I am aware of that. And the second thing that I've incorporated into my business to help me, uh, uh, to help me a lot is to have, it's, it's called a workplace music. You can find it on YouTube. It, it'd be like a four hour loop. And it's just playing this very soothing uh, music and it's very motivational music. It's kind of like what's known as binaural beats. And I've done that one before as well. So for those of you guys that are having the office type jobs, and if it's okay that you know, with your coworkers, because you're not sitting right next to somebody else, you can have some music playing or have some headphones on. Mm -hmm. um, having that, because that I find to be very inspirational. Because I'll get up after a, a day of work and I was like, I don't feel as tired as I uh, sometimes do. The stress level hasn't changed, but I don't feel it as tired as I do. And I could attribute that to the uh, to looking at nature or just looking outside, as well as having that music going. So that's that's going to be my golden tip for all you business owners out there, especially again if you're on the laptop or on the computer a lot. And this guy, and you could have it by the music playing in such a way that it's not going to get picked up if you're on the if you're doing like I say a call center. So you can have that at least a little bit go, uh, going on just so you can help relieve your stress. So yeah. that's just my again my one of my golden tips for you guys today. Definitely. Well, Shanda, uh, I would like to ask you a couple of more things before we go. Um, what do you think are some? Uh, what have been some of your biggest successes uh, with your business so far, or as, as you're starting this new business? Because I know you, you you have other things going on as well. Would you like to share with us uh, about some of your successes? I, I would say, it, you know, the, the biggest success is consistency. 
And that is when you're going on and you're really being intentional about it. And, and then it goes back to the why. So that's where those two actually work together. So your why, because I'm always going back to that question, why am I doing this? And then this is helping me to be more consistent. But again, you see how those two work together. It's like, okay, well, if I'm going to, if, if I know what my why is, then that's going to help me towards being more consistent. So I found, I've found as a business owner to, I, I've found over the last year, year or two that I'm always going back to my why. And, and then that's helping to build on the consistency piece. So whether that be uh, being more consistent with following up with my clients, uh, more consistent with uh, getting like feedback, even that's another big piece is getting feedback from my client or going on and posting on LinkedIn, you know, once a day. Uh, that's again, that was something that I, I knew I had, a, I had to work on was being more consistent with posting on a particular platform, whichever that may be for you, uh, because everybody has a different platform that they, they feel more comfortable with. And so that's another key thing too, is that, yeah, you might feel comfortable with a certain platform. Okay. But then then comes that, okay, how can I be more consistent with using that platform? Um, and, and getting it, and and I getting totally it agree with that. Cause when I had my first, um, cause I, I'm launching a second podcast right now called business amplified. But when I had my first podcast, like in 2016, which I created, it was called uh, life's little lessons. I would say you know, it was just me talking into the microphone. It was, and I just released my second book, uh, Designing Your Own Destiny. And the podcast was to promote the book. So we're going to talk about different aspects of the book. And therefore, and then it's like, okay, I've got 22 chapters in this book. I've got like three to four or five topics per chapter. I've got, uh, you know, I've got 100 plus things I could talk about. And I went and I was excited. I know it was a brand new, it was that brand new little shiny toy. And I started, I did my first podcast. Then the week after that, I did my second podcast. And the week after that, I did my third podcast. And then a month later, I did my fourth podcast. And then about a month and a half later, I did my fifth. And then a week after that, I did my, so I was, I became extremely inconsistent. And that is uh, you know, because this thing was that new shiny toy. I was excited about it, but you're absolutely right. It was the consistency. And there are, there's AI software out there. There's platforms out there that will auto post for you. You can go and create an entire month's worth of posting. Uh, like sit, you know, sit down in an afternoon and let's say you're, you're doing uh, memes on, uh, on Instagram and you can go and create a, an entire month, you know, 30 memes in, in one afternoon and then have it scheduled to be released at two o'clock on Wednesday, uh, uh, every single Wednesday. Now you just, you know, you, uh, you, you create that and you use another tool so you don't have to be physically doing it all the time. So yes, consistency, consistency is number one. And then think of it like you are like it's an episode of television and your favorite show, your, it says NCIS, whatever it comes out on Thursdays at 7 PM consistently the same exact time it's not like okay today it's gonna to be at 7 p.m on thursday next week it's gonna be wednesday at 2 a uh, 2 2 p.m and then the next week is going to be on friday at like you need not only to be consistent but be also uh deliberate and doing it on a regular basis and that's the part that's one of the biggest things about consistency is go out there and find a tool that can help you not only be consistent but also go out at the exact same time every week mm -hmm. yes Definitely. Because again, you want, and the consistency helps with your audience because your audience is, they're expecting you to be on at that day and time. And so after a while, you see that happen, you see that happening. Like, and, mm -hmm. and I, and I know as a, a coach, I, I, I get the, cause I do a never, it's called a never miss a Monday live on Facebook. And so every Monday at two o'clock PM central standard time, I go on and I do my live 
And I've, I've started over the years, you know, getting that feedback, like, um, where are you, are you going to be on this? You know, are, uh, well, it's not, are you going to be on, they're expecting you to be on, on Monday at that time. Well, that's so how you grow your brand is because if, if you, if you're, if you're coming out, um, haphazardly people don't know when and when to expect the next next piece of content that's the way you build your business is to ha- is to have your is to train your uh, clients to know when to hear from you and that that and i'm glad you said that because i know myself that on the first and third tuesdays at three o'clock uh, eastern i have a meetup group where i do a training so I'll go in there and put it on, on meet on. This is the train. This is what we're going to be talking about. You can join if you're not. But they know at the first and the third Tuesday at three o'clock uh, Eastern, there's there's going to be a, up to a ninety minute training on some type of, some type of topic on how to uh, build your business. I mean, uh, I've done trainings on uh, on the current uses of AI. I've done trainings on time management. I've done trainings on uh, my next training that that we have scheduled for this was how to start a podcast. Because I know right now I'm starting my second podcast and I'm going to use what I'm learning of, or, uh, at the time of this recording to actually teach those people uh, in, you know, on that Tuesday. So the thing is, you have to, you, you need to be uh, uh, very uh, deliberate. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, before uh, before we go, how how could the uh, the listeners uh, uh, find you and get a hold of you? And, uh, uh, yeah, and just get a hold of you. Well, I I am on LinkedIn, so it's very easy to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, and Shanda, if you go to Shanda S H A N D A Coats K O H T Z, you can easily find me because there's not too many Shandas out there, Kevin. <laughs> and- we'll say that is a pretty uh, a pretty uncommon name. <laughs> So LinkedIn is a great way to get connected with me. And then also I have my, my email is at info at goodwatergoodlifellc.com. So my, my title is a high ticket exit strategy coach with good water, good life. So that's where the info at with good water, good life comes in. So that would be a great way to get connected and learn learn more about what it is that I, I'm doing. Yeah, that's one of the things we did not talk about was her water business. However, uh, I do know that I do know it from previous conversation that she she's uh, uh, pretty successful at, at that business. And again, if I if I remember that that was at www.goodwatergoodlifellc.com. Correct. Okay. That is my website. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, everybody, I'm, I'm hopefully you guys have learned uh, something about uh, being consistent in your business as well as uh, as well as how to relax and to help motivate yourself, especially if you're just starting out. She does offer a, a coaching business uh, for people who are making wanted to make that transition from you know, being in the career, being a teacher or something like that. Go ahead and just give her a call. And for those of you that are listening to this show and you think you might be a, gr- a great guest for our show, because we are always looking for guests, you can go to our website, which is or our calendar, which is uh, www.optimalperformanceacademy.org forward slash pre-interview. No hyphens in, the, in, the, uh, in, in that word pre-interview. Again, that's optimal performanceacademy.org forward slash pre-interview. And we can schedule a 15 to 20 minute time where we can talk about your business and to see if you're if you're a good fit for the show. Well, Shanda, I do appreciate you uh, being here. Any last words before we go? Uh, my last words are <clears throat> self-care. So if you are looking for ways to get provide yourselves more self-care, Kevin talked about yoga. I had mentioned massage therapy as well as, you know, getting activity in as well uh, by playing pickleball. So whatever that activity may be, uh, whether it's uh, maybe tennis, maybe pickleball, maybe a game of, uh, maybe a volleyball game or sand volleyball is always fun. I mean, obviously it's the cooler, cooler month right now. Uh, We're probably not gonna be playing, but we always can play indoor volleyball. That's the great thing though about volleyball is that and basketball and pickleball and and so you can play indoor or you can play outdoor. 
but you're having fun, you're getting that activity in, you're taking your mind off, you know, what you like to, what you really have a passion for, but still it, it really does make a difference in your overall, overall outlook on life. Well, we can also do a, a little a little bit of a of a plug for the good water, good life. Uh, make sure you keep you you got you keep yourself hydrated. That's more than by far one of the most important things that most people do is they don't drink enough water. And by the way, if you've got your water in the refrigerator, there's a, those are some extra movements every twenty or so minutes. Just go up there and get another glass of water, or at least go and get some ice. So get some activity in your in your body while you're working. Definitely. Well, everybody, I do appreciate you guys for being here today and stay tuned for our next episode. Thanks for tuning in to another empowering episode of Business Amplified with Kevin A. Dunlap. If you found value in today's insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Keep amplifying your business. And remember, your success journey is our inspiration. Until next time on Business Amplified, go out there and make your business thrive. Thank you.